Good day all. I wrap Steen of Linen Associates with your Metal Market Wrap Up for this Tuesday. I hate these long weekends, but it is Tuesday, the 16th of February, 2021, the day after President's Day. The markets had a lot of catching up to do with the public coming back in. As it turned out, the market started off with a good oomph on the upside in metals and other markets, and it gave it up late in the day. Okay. Don't know if that's a near-term trading top or not. You need more than one day to figure that out. What we did see, though, is interest rates are climbing. And as much as interest rates are climbing for a reason that people are expecting the economies, the economic, to get better and better, it also weighs on the market to a degree. So we're going to get on this, this pattern, I think, where COVID cases are going down in the United States, interest rates are going up. That's an enemy of the stock market. But then the economic data comes out, the stock market comes back from those breaks rallies to other highs until interest rates eventually overwhelm the market if that turns out to be the case. You're sort of on that scenario. Well, we're hearing firm after firm talk about reflation. You're not seeing it in the gold market. If anything, gold is still in a downtrend. So let's go to that chart and get a feel. You've stayed underneath the 18-week moving average. That is a bearish factor. The market's in a down thrust. You can see that, how it's been going. As we come over to a daily bar chart, this is the lowest low we've recently had. How could it be anything but bearish? It isn't. And when you put on the swing line, you've got the lower highs, the lower lows. That's a bearish scenario. The resistance is the 18-day average of closes. You're seeing it right there. And the market is staying under. So I have the bias down. I certainly have the pattern of lower highs, lower lows. I could get another level of a bearish crossover with the 100-day average getting underneath the 200-day. So that would be a bearish setup. Why? Let me give you the education if that happens. You'd have the 18-day, the shorter-term average. Then you'd have the 100 under the 200, the medium-term, and the long-term average, the 200 above it. So it would be lined up in what traders call a bearish pattern. Where's the support? What you keep coming down to. You hit this last week, and you hit it again today. Uh, you're hitting it again tonight as well you can see that 1784.60 the last absolute low the market made recently uh, tonight 1785.90 do i think traders are adding to shorts at a bollinger band no when i look at momentum oversold so i have a market that's gone back to the bollinger band in a downtrend with downside bias and it's hit the bollinger band it's hit its target I think the pros will take some money off the table, and if the market gets away from being oversold, they'll sell it again. And if this turns out to embed, they'll sell it that way. But I don't think you're going to entice them right here. The gold-silver ratio continues to favor silver, as I explained over and over. The lower this number goes, you need less ounces of silver in a perfect world where you take your silver, you go to a, a shop, and you turn it in for gold, no commissions and so on, you'd need about 65.85 ounces. In the silver market, you are still very much in an uptrend. You have higher lows higher highs at work. The number I don't want to see taken out is 26.75 because that would break the pattern of higher highs, higher lows. Nothing on this chart, the way that I teach charting, can turn the market bearish. Why? Let's assume it closes under 26.76, the line in the sand, that 18-day average. So the bias would be down, but I'd have a pattern of a higher high and a lower low. That is not a downtrend. Momentum could even turn down just wouldn't get it. So to get this market going up, the one thing that has been lagging so far is momentum refuses to turn up. You've had the market reach down the lows and reach from there to higher highs, and momentum hasn't gone with it. Momentum often leads market conditions. So keep your eye on that. It's trying to turn down, but it hasn't succeeded. In the copper market, are we going to embed? To embed, you have to have three days in a row where the two numbers, they're called a K and a D line in the slow stochastic, stay over 80. You can't count today, so let's get rid of it because we don't know where Wednesday's gonna finish up. Both numbers on Tuesday were there. Both numbers on Friday were there. They were not there. 
on Thursday. You have to get through today to know if it's embedded. If it is, it's an exceptionally strong signal. Tells me, at least the way that I teach charting, that I would look for even higher prices. And if that occurs, I don't care if the lower Bollinger Band is taken out. It takes over the chart action. And what it would say is on pullbacks, the pros are going to be buying the market, looking for the market to keep getting back to the upper Bollinger Band if it embeds. In the platinum, not surprised to see the market reject staying over the upper Bollinger Band eventually. Now this is pretty fascinating because the market did have one, two, three, four, five closes over the upper Bollinger Band. Today's close at 12, uh, what was it, 1279.60 was uh, at the Bollinger Band, just under it at 1280.60. So it didn't make it the sixth day, and it's breaking back a little bit tonight. My rule there, you rarely get beyond five in the futures markets. I've pointed that out over and over. It can happen. But if you're playing for that, I want the other side of the bet that it'll cross over and be under that number. Doesn't mean it has to break a lot. That is not what the rule says. It's that you're going to get back under. You know if you had the embedded reading, the pros will look for the buying condition. You're not there. You're just in an overbought market that could be exhausting some of that rally. Here the Bollinger, I'm sorry, the, the swing line is very important. You still have the pattern of higher lows, higher highs, but it's not embedded. So I, I really tune in. If you take out 12, 12, 60, you could be going back to wherever that 18-day average fits in. In the palladium market, you got up within a hair's breadth here of hitting that upper Bollinger Band in an overbought market. I think the pros took some money off the table. Um, higher lows, higher highs, support between the 100-day average and the 18, but I don't think you're gonna attract buying just now. I think because you're overbought, you can pull back and we'll see where it finds it. I'm, I'll be looking for the techniques. Even if the market takes out, 23.37.50, you'd have a higher high and lower low. So I don't think, I, I see nothing to turn the market bearish, but I don't see anything that says, hey, you're overbought, just jump in, you're gonna win bet. Not there. In the uh, US dollar, tonight should be interesting. This is the lowest break low that we had today in the market at 90.09, since it rallied back up here over the 91, what was that number? Let's just put it on the chart so you and I can see it. That number was 91.60. So it broke approximately 150 points, had a big reversal to the upside. What's the rule when you have an outside day up? If you take out that low within the next two trading sessions, I immediately look for the market to get down to wherever the lower Bollinger Band is because all the key moving averages are above the market. I am not saying that's going to be the case. The market is oversold and because of that, I don't know that you're going to attract how much attention to wanting to get short at that 18-day average. If you take a look, the market certainly got up towards it and that's what I call that line in the sand. You're right in that zone of resistance. Distance, take out 90, 73 and a half, you negate the downtrend, but you don't start an uptrend. You'd have a lower and low and a higher high. So very important uh, evening tonight in the gold, and that'll give me an idea of what to do. Now with the reflation trade, you have to understand the grain markets are on fire. You have a cattle on feed report. You've got gold not responding. You've got Bitcoin up to $51,000 a coin. Ethereum has now begun trading. Ethereum? Ethereum is what it is. Ethereum's begun trading. On the 18th, by the way, the CME group is having a very large uh, conference about that where they give you some trading ideas and so on. But what we do right at the Lynn Group is we write on all these markets for our traders, and I mean all of them. And we do it in such a way that you can uh, keep up with what we do, see what's going on there. You can have these reports sent to you via email. You can get an email and then see them also in our mobile app. You can see them on our website. You can see them in our charting software. Our reports come out there and many more. I mean, we really write a lot. Here you had a holiday weekend. How many firms are writing reports? Our staff's putting them out. It, it, it's not a holiday for us. We, we continue with the markets because you have some trading going on in the, uh, in the electronic sessions. So if you'd like to see what our report is, it's simple. All you need to do is give us a call. You can go to our website if you prefer. Go to the free offer section. It's all there. We'll be happy to send it to you. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a good day. See you tomorrow.